Hello, I'm Joshua Farnsworth and welcome to my traditional woodworking school here in Earliesville, Virginia. And in this video, I wanted to show you uh, the anatomy of wall cupboards, like this one for example. So those of you who may have been following my videos and blog in the past saw that I did a, an anatomy uh, video of end tables uh, because a lot of people, they just are kind of confused about how different kinds of furniture fit together. And in that video, I showed how, uh, how to, I didn't show step by step how to build it, but I showed, it how, all, showed how all the joints fit together and how the, everything works together in a table like that. And I wanted to do that, that was really, really popular. So I decided to do that again, because I think a lot of people want to know how these fit together. So uh, this uh, particular wall cupboard is a, a shaker design that I kind of came up with based off of some other uh, antique shaker cupboards that I've seen in the past. And uh, I really uh, wanted to share this with you so that you could see how to not necessarily just build this one, but how you can build other ones like it, uh, just by understanding how everything fits together. Uh, if you're, if anyone's interested in, in uh, plans for this, I, I haven't drawn any up, but let me know and I could probably draw some up and put them up in my store for a reasonable amount. And, uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and I'll walk you through how this and other wall cupboards are constructed. So I first prepared all the cherry. Uh, I, I, on, on this, I milled it all up with power tools and then got all the machine marks out with the hand plane. And this particular wall cupboard fits together with hand cut dovetails and that forms the carcass or the case of the wall cupboard. And you can see uh, you shouldn't have to give too much more pressure than just hand pressure or maybe a little bit of light tapping. Here's another shot, a close-up shot to show you how the tails fit onto the pins. And you can see by my thumb there that there's a groove going through as well, and that accepts the back of the cupboard, which you'll see in a little bit. So here's what it looks like, and you can see inside there's dados going across for the shelves and in the back there is a groove cut on each side uh, for the back to slide into. And here is how the dados work. The shelf fits right inside each of the dados. Should fit snug but not too tight so that it will break your case. And just snug it up. These shelves of course will require just a little bit of glue, but not so much that it uh, comes spewing out. But really, uh, in this particular design, if you really didn't want to glue the shelves in, I think that would probably be okay too, because we're going to put a face frame on the front. You can see it fits nice and snug in there. And this is how it looks. And there's the groove in the back, because this particular back drops down inside. So then in the, here in the next step, I just glue the face frame pieces on. The face frame is what will help you to attach the doors to the carcass of the cupboard. I'm just using Tight Bond 3 here, some PVA glue, but you could also use other glues like traditional hide glue. Those would, that would work just fine. But I just put enough on so it doesn't squeeze out everywhere, not too much. Spread it out nice and even. And then just set the face frame on and line it up. Alternatively, one thing that will make it, could make it easier is if you attach the bottom before you put the face frames on and then you can just slide it down there. So just kind of go in the order that's easiest for you. And then I stick the clamps on, try to give some equal clamping pressure 
and just tighten it down. Just make sure you add enough clamps to s spread out the pressure. Now here's the bottom. In this situation, I'm using a different type of glue. This is li liquid hide glue. Just make sure it's not too old because it does expire. This is the old fashioned style glue that there's people who are making it in uh, handy liquid form so you don't have to melt down the crystals. And then I just put it on, rub it to spread the glue. And then you can add some clamps on here. I found that uh, putting nails in the bottom isn't really necessary. You can if you'd like to, but I've found that the glue seems to hold it just fine. It's not structural. And then I go ahead and sand down and scrape and plane and put a finish on what I've got put together so far. And this is because I'm going to put the back in. So I pre-finish the back. You can see it slides right in to that groove and bottoms out. And then I have a nice little shaker handle at the top. And you can see here is an illustration of the other type of backs that you find on cupboards. Here's a, a spice cupboard I, I made with a shiplap in the back. It allows the back to move back and forth. But it just sits into a rabbit and then you'll nail it in to the case right there. So that's how some other styles work. But for this one, I really liked the back that just slides in and then the top will hold it in. And then you can hang it on a shaker peg. Here comes the top, just to show you how it fits on there. So the top actually holds the back in. So yes, I'm switching back to another glue. It's <laughs> just whatever's most handy for me. And I again spread it on the top, but I don't get too close to the edges so it doesn't squeeze out onto the finish I already created. Then I take cut nails and put a little wax on them. I drill some pilot holes and then I pound these uh, cut nails in and set them. And I do make sure that the cut nails, the long edge is running with the grain so it doesn't cause splitting. So now onto the doors. This is how the mortise and tenon frame and panel doors fit together. And as you can see here, I'm going to show you each step twice, one in a close-up mode. And this is how it goes with the rails going into the styles. And you can see the grooves that I plowed in there. That's where the panels are going to fit in. There's the center rail going into the style. But you can see here how it fits in. You can see the tenon haunch fits right into the groove of the door, perfectly like that. And then I can put in the bottom panel, and the panel also is pre-finished because as it moves over time, it's going to expand and contract. You don't want to see an unfinished part of the panel coming out in the winter time when it contracts back. So just put them in, and this is how the top fits on. And this is what the finished door looks like once it's assembled. And this is what it looks like when it's glued up. <laughs> now, after that, I cut some little uh, hinge mortises. First with chisels and then with a little miniature router plane. And I do the same on the doors. So the particular finish I used on this wall cover was Danish oil. I like how it gives a nice rich penetration but also offers some protection. But it's not a table and it's going to be hanging on the wall so it doesn't need a really protective finish. It can just be more of a beautiful hand rub finish. And before I put screws in the doors, I like to put some wax on it. This is a good three-in-one oil wax mixed with beeswax that my friend David Ray Pine, who teaches here, showed. And we just 
set the screws so that they're even with each other. That's not necessary, but it looks nice. And then I just turned a little knob on the lathe. Nothing fancy, just a modest shaker knob. And I made sure I turned the tenon of the knob to fit uh, a drill bit that I had that I would, could put into the door. You can see here now I'm putting some nice Danish oil on the knob. I always love this part. Looks beautiful coming off of there. So this is a how the tenon knob goes into the door, and this particular one is designed to also be a lock. So I fashioned a little a little latch there, and line up the holes, and I take a little nail, a wire nail, and I cut off the sharp end, and size it just right, the right length, so it doesn't hang over. And I set it inside of there, and I just take a little ball-peen hammer and tap it in until it goes flush. And this knob doesn't need to be really tight uh, because you want a little bit of play in it. Once it's tapped in, then you can see that the knob is able to turn, and that's your little locking mechanism. And this is how it works. Push the door closed, twist it, and it keeps the door closed. So you can see some of that cherry will darken up over time and even out a little bit, and it will just be beautiful hanging up on some nice shaker pegs. So that is how this particular shaker cupboard fits together. And you can make any kind of cupboard you want, kind of using these same principles. This is Joshua Farnsworth. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, workshop tours of amazing traditional woodworkers, and tool buying guides. You can ask questions and share your projects with thousands of woodworkers on my free traditional woodworking forum. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started in traditional woodworking. Enjoy!